break, Nasanta's mother and her clanmates return to their den. Rouses the cubs. Nasanta is larger now, and lighter fur marks her face and neck. The adults have returned with meat, a rare luxury for hyena cubs. It's the highest ranking cubs that commandeer the scrap. Nasanta is lost to the feast, but she fights for her share. The other top ranking cubs are stiff competition, and they won't let lower ranking cubs anywhere near this scrap. As an adult, Nasanta will have to contend kills. She must learn to eat fast or lose out since a clan can reduce a carcass to scraps in less than 20 minutes. She will still suckle her mother's rich milk for about a year, but this new taste for meat is the beginning of Nasanta's transformation into a deadly and efficient predator. The Lua Plain is undergoing an extraordinary metamorphosis. In the coming days, the rains fall in an almost continuous deluge. The beginning of an annual flood that will cover much of the plains. Dusty depressions become waterlogged marshes. And life floods into the plains. At last, the migration arrives. Just in time for the bountiful wet season, over 35,000 wildebeest descend on the plains. Largest wildebeest migration on Earth. Most of the cows are pregnant, and in the next few weeks, all of them will give birth. The calves make easy prey, but the sheer number of them ensures that many will survive to adulthood. For the hyenas, the time of plenty has begun. Meanwhile, at the den finding her place in the clan. She marks the grass around the den with a distinctive scented paste from glands beneath her tail. The adults use this pasting to mark their territory. For Nasanta, it's part of the process of establishing her rank. She is quickly learning to exert the status she inherited from her mother. This male flattens his ears behind his head as she approaches him, showing Nasanta lifts her leg in the typical hyena greeting, allowing him to recognize her distinctive scent. Most of the adult males here are immigrants from other clans who joined Nasanta's clan to find a mate. They forfeited the rank they inherited from their mothers when they left their own clans, falling instantly to the bottom of the hyena hierarchy. Despite Nasanta's age and tiny size, this male and all the other adult immigrant males in her clan are subordinate to her. The tiny cub holds such sway because her mother backs her up. <laughs> the matriarch often comes to Nasanta's defense, attacking low-ranking hyenas to reinforce her tiny cub status. The male is now in a precarious position. He must show absolute submission if he is to avoid an attack. Nasanta follows her mother's example, sniffing the male's genitalia. He bows and bobs his head. But the clan females are not convinced. 
They join the interrogation. Fearlessly, the Santa stays in the thick of the fray. The cubs are jumpy, but Nasanta seems fearless. With the protection of the matriarch and the clan females, no hyena would dare to hurt Nasanta. Four kilometers to the southwest, Twambo is not faring quite as well. He's also growing up fast, with the first spots showing through his black coat. But unlike most of the other cubs, Twambo is a loner. As the cubs get older, they become more aware of each other's ranks. The higher ranking cubs have built bonds with they each will other. carry into adulthood. But Twambo has few allies in the clan. When the other cubs do take an interest in him, it's usually to beat him up. The older the cubs get, the more they pick on little Twambo. And unlike Nasanta, Twambo will get no help from his mother. He must fight his battles alone. In the meantime, Twambo's mother has other things in mind. It's time to leave the cubs to hunt. There are many mouths to feed. The clan needs a big kill. Tonight, the hyenas will hunt as a pack. The search for prey takes Twambo's clan dangerously close to rival territory. They are right on the border of Nasanta's clan's hunting ground. Clans are viciously territorial. If they're discovered, a conflict could break out, but it's a risk they are willing to take. They isolate a small herd of wildebeest, seeking out the most vulnerable targets. The clan charges the herd. A cow bolts in panic. A calf is separated from the herd. Both mother and calf fall to the deadly pack. But despite their success, the clan's proximity to rival territory makes them nervous. A violent clash with Nasanta's clan could end in serious injuries. They eat feverishly, dismembering the carcasses in minutes. The powerful jaws crush down with almost half a ton of force tearing through bone and flesh with ease. Despite the feeding frenzy, the hyenas are anxious to avoid being discovered. They try to drag the kills back into their own territory before they are spotted. The move comes too late. A territorial patrol from Nasanta's clan has come to investigate. <laughs> the 
the scout Santa's clan is upon them. Twambo's father, the intruding clan's alpha male, is in trouble. A large female from the Santa's clan is close on his tail. is cornered. The fierce females show him no mercy. They target his spine and ears. This is a fight for his life. the battered members of Twambo's clan return to the den. Many are wounded, but only one is missing. Twambo's father. Weeks pass before he finally appears limping and disfigured, but alive. His wounds have healed, but they will mark him for life. His ear has been ripped from his head, but the alpha male's injuries are not the worst of the fight. At Nasanta's den to the north, a male hyena's wounds reflect the true horror of the conflict. His nose and lips have been ripped from his face, healing into a permanent snarl. Next to humans, hyenas are probably one of the most fatally aggressive animals on Earth. One day, Twambo will have to breach this deadly territorial rivalry when he leaves to find a mate in a new clan. In the weeks following the clan war, the rains continue to fall in a ceaseless torrent. The waters swallow vast tracts of land. There is little dry ground. A blessing for the birds, but a curse for the herds that must wade through shoulder-high water. The flooding encroaches fast on Twambo's den. The adult hyenas seem to enjoy the quagmire, using it as a pantry in which to store scraps for future meals. But the cubs cannot swim as well as their parents. If the waters reach the den, they could drown. For now, the den is still dry, and Twambo and his clanmates are safe. 
Twambo is starting to look more like the adult hyenas. His once black coat is now a spotty mane of brown fur, and he has more than doubled in size. But his low rank remains a problem. Epic on him. Fortunately, he's also becoming more independent and can escape his belligerent clanmates as he explores ever further from the den. But as adulthood draws near, the toughest part of his life approaches. Soon, instinct will compel him to leave in search of a mate from another clan. If he's not killed for intruding on rival territory, he'll have to struggle for acceptance into a new clan. What little rank he has will be stripped away, and like the adult males of his own clan, he'll become submissive to the clan females. Unprovoked attacks and exclusion from kills will become commonplace. It's a hard life, but life without a clan is harder. Alone, he may struggle for food. His ability to draw nutrition from even the oldest bones may become a matter of survival. At the clan to the north, Nasanta and her sister will not suffer this fate. They will As never want for food. In fact, unlike Twambo, they will often be the first to feed at kills. Much of the land around Nasanta's den is dry, and the matriarch guides the cubs through their future hunting grounds. Soon, they will even be allowed to join their mother on a hunt. At nightfall, the rains begin anew. Catfish squirm through the flooded Lua Plain as the waters rise ever higher. If the flood reaches Twambo's den, it could change everything for his clan. The downpour continues into the morning. A female from Twambo's clan returns to the den, but her clanmates are gone. The burrows lie empty. The waters have crept within meters of the den. They are dangerously high. The cubs lack the size and strength to swim to safety and could easily drown in the deep waters. Cut off from dry land, the den could become a death trap. The matriarch must have led the cubs out in the night before the waters reached the den. But this female has been left behind. She will have to search for the clan on higher ground, or try to survive without them. Was Twambo with the other cubs when they left? Or has he too been abandoned in the flood, left to search the territory for remnants of his clan? Years pass, and the fates of Twambo and his clan remain uncertain. Dry seasons come and go, and each year the plains flood anew. 
Nasanta continues to flourish as she grows into a Break, Nasanta's mother and her clanmates return to their den. Rouses the cubs. Nasanta is larger now, and lighter fur marks her face and neck. The adults have returned with meat, a rare luxury for hyena cubs. It's the highest ranking cubs that commandeer the scrap. The calves make easy prey, but the sheer number of them ensures that many will survive to adulthood. For the hyenas, the time of plenty has begun. Meanwhile, at the den finding her place in the clan, she marks the grass around the den with a distinctive scented paste from glands beneath her tail. The adults use this pasting to mark their territory. For Nasanta, it's part of the process of establishing her rank. At last, the migration arrives. Just in time for the bountiful wet season, over 35,000 wildebeest descend on the plains. Largest wildebeest migration on Earth. Most of the cows are pregnant, 
and in the next few weeks, all of them will give birth. Nusanta is last to the feast, but she fights for her share. The other top-ranking cubs are stiff competition, and they won't let lower-ranking cubs anywhere near this scrap. As an adult, Nasanta will have to contend kills. She must learn to eat fast or lose out, since a clan can reduce a carcass to scraps in less than 20 minutes. She will still suckle her mother's rich milk for about a year, but this new taste for meat is the beginning of Nasanta's transformation into a deadly and efficient predator. The Lua Plain is undergoing an extraordinary metamorphosis. In the coming days, the rains fall in an almost continuous deluge. The beginning of an annual flood that will cover much of the plain. Dusty depressions become waterlogged marshes. And life floods into the plains.